Hello everybody and welcome to your next SFML Made Easy tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about collision. Now by the end of this tutorial we're going to have a program where th when the player hits the enemy the enemy is going to move or the object is going to move to another random position on the screen. And if you've ever watched uh, Lucica Mage's videos or something like that uh, it's similar to picking sticks once you touch the enemy or the stick or whatever you like to call it then it moves to another random position and you can turn this into a game if you like it's up to you but this is just a test collision so uh, let us get right into it so to incorporate random numbers we're gonna include these three um, things right here if you don't wanna do random numbers and random number stuff or you just wanna learn collision then this isn't really important to you uh, but have it there if you really want to work with random numbers. So now I have uh four constants. These could be defines or enums, either one. But I the I I've set them to player our player width, player height, object width, and object height are all equal to ten. Uh, I had it there because when I release my source code on my website, if you guys want to change, you can change it if you want to. And we have our, the, our screen with our screen height, and we have our move speed. And I probably should move it up here. So uh, we have two functions, or two other functions besides main in our program, which is the collision function and controls function. Before I get into the collision function, I'll get into the controls. Controls you should be familiar with. It takes two things in the parameter, the window, so we can get our input and our shape, our player shape, so we can actually move it. So if they press the right key, we move the player to the right. If they press the left key, we move it, the player to the left. If they press down, we move the player down. If they press up, we move the player up. Self-explanatory, you guys should already know that. Uh, so if you don't, then go back and watch the previous tutorials. Now, let us get into collision. So, for a collision, this is what we do. We basically at first check if the player is not hitting the object, and if the player is not hitting the object, then we uh, we do something. That means it, it has collided, and therefore we do something. So what we're this t type of collision is called bounding box collision because it checks if uh, one box is intersecting with another one. Now, this is the most widely used type of collision in 2D games, and uh, the, the, reason, the reason being is that it might not be as accurate as, say, something like pixel collision or something, but it, it, it can be very effective, and uh, I know, like, sometimes you might have sprites of players, and player sprites aren't normally exactly rectangular or something, but normally what you do is draw a rectangle a, a rectangular area around the player or have an invisible rectangular area around the player and check for a collision around that. But it, it's it's really up to you what you want. Uh you could also have like a invisible uh color or something and do pixel collision with bounding box collision as well. Uh, but I, I'm not gonna really get into in depth with that. I'm gonna get more in depth to that in my advanced platformer series. But uh, yeah, bounding box collision is the most widely used collision for 2D platformers. So uh, pay attention. So the way we check to see if the player has not hit the enemy is uh, we have to check if all the areas um aren't touching. Uh, so we say if the x1 of the player, uh, no, if the x2 of the player is less than the x1 of the object, or the x, uh, or the x1 of the player is greater than the x2 of the object, or the y2 of the player is less than the y1 of the object, or the y1 of the player is greater than the y2 of the object, therefore there is no collision. Therefore the player isn't touching anything. Uh, is not close. It could be close to the object, but it isn't intersecting with the object. Else, that means there is a collision. Then we type out collision, and then we reset the object to a new random position. So we set it in the x coordinate to a random position between zero and the screen width subtract um, object width. And for the y, we set the uh, we set it for 
do a range of zero to screen height, subtract uh, subtract object height. So if we look at the main function, we see that uh, we have two shapes. They're both rectangular shapes, one called player and one called object. And if you watch my last tutorial, we we'll we're setting the origin to zero and zero. If you don't understand what I'm meaning, then you if you don't understand what I'm saying, then watch my previous tutorial. And then we set it to a player width and player height, and we set it to red, and we set this to our object width and object height, and we set the color to blue. And then we set our player's position to zero, 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 and we set our object's position to 100, 100, and 100, 100. And then we, uh, this is when we create our render window, self explanatory, you guys should already know that. And then we set our S RAND, so then we get random numbers, at a different random number. Um, every single time then we select uh, we do our game loop create our event have our event loop right here and then right down here we will s put our control so we can move our player we have our collision and notice for our collision function that we have our ampersand for our object because we're going to be changing our ob object position but yet we don't need one for player because we're not changing anything with the player we're just getting information for the player we're not setting any information so then we have our controls and then we have our collision to check if the two uh, have collided we clear the window draw the object in the player and then we display everything to the screen so if I run this by clicking F9 or or F5 using Visual Studio or something like that and then we compile this and we run it we should get our we should so on our screen right here I'll put this into view you'll see our players in red and uh, the the enemy is in blue or the object in blue so when I touch it the object moves to a new random position if I touch it again it moves to a new random position and so on and so forth so this is just a uh, uh, this is how you do bounding box collision and the next tutorial we're going to be learning about pixel collision so hope you enjoy this tutorial thanks for watching and bye